Hello. You'll need to ask for patient cooperation when doing an examination, performing some sort of procedure, or doing a test. So in this tutorial, I'll turn attention to some of the ways we use to give instructions or make requests in English in the healthcare setting. And there are mainly three ways. One is the imperative, and I will go into that in more detail later. The other is the standard question or request. And then we have the statement that implies a question. So let's look first at imperatives, also known as commands or orders. Take off your clothes. Stop talking. Lie on the bed. Bend over. There are some situations that use and even need this kind of quick, abrupt, communication, for example, in an emergency room where you need to get things done quickly or on an on-site rescue scene. However, for routine office situations and elective situations, this tone is considered rather abrupt and sometimes even impolite. Now, you could say, of course, please remove your clothes, which yes, is correct and more polite, but it still sounds a little rigid and somewhat off-putting, especially if the person is very anxious or highly sensitive. Remember, an important function of your overall communication is to put the patient at ease so they feel comfortable and want to share relevant information with you about themselves. So even the tone of your instructions and requests have the potential to either encourage or discourage how much information they share with you. So my recommendation is, unless you are in one of those emergent or urgent situations, avoid this kind of imperative or command tone. Instead, we ask the patient to do something. So let's take 82-year-old Mr. John, whose abdomen you need to examine. You say, could you remove your clothes, please? Or would you lie down on the bed? Note here the use of the modal verbs would and could. With or without, please, in your question, using would and could makes your sentence sound very polite and is another way that we pose polite requests in English. Now, a little note here about dealing with this patient, 82-year-old Mr. John. Now, just like younger people, elderly patients also vary greatly in physical and mental condition. Some are frail and slow and others are stronger and fitter than you and I. But overall, it is more common to come across situations of dementia and hearing loss and slow pace when dealing with the elderly. So keep your requests and your instructions as far as possible simple and clear and be prepared to repeat yourself if necessary. Which brings us now to the third way we have of making requests or giving instructions. And that is what we call statements that imply. Here, you make a statement, but an English speaker understands that you mean they have to do something. So let's take 82-year-old Miss Smith this time, also with abdominal pain and constipation. And again, you need to examine her abdomen. Now you may say, I'll need you to remove your clothes and get on the bed. Or, I'll need to examine your tummy now. Also, another thing we do is we ask permission. We add a little clause at the end that asks the patient's permission to do this. Although this is more of a convention and we don't expect the patient to say no, we still add it. I'll need to examine your tummy now, if that's okay. 
if the patient doesn't react, maybe they do have some mental or hearing issues, then you could put it more plainly as a question, as mentioned before. I mean, could you get on the bed so I can examine your abdomen? Or could you get on the bed so I could examine your tummy? Again, with an elderly patient, you may need to repeat information or say it in a different way so they understand. So it is very good if you have the skill to say things politely but in different ways. Now, for today's quiz. You have a 78-year-old Mr. Han with hearing loss, chronically, but he's here because he's had a cough for four months. He's wearing three shirts today because he worries about catching cold, but he loves to chat and you need to listen to his chess. Question A, how do you ask him to remove his shirts? And question B, how do you ask him to stop talking long enough so you can listen to his chest? So let's tackle question A. How do you ask him to remove his shirts? You can say, could you remove your shirts so I can listen to your chest? Or, I need to listen to your chest, so I'll need you to remove your shirts if that's okay. B, how do you get him to stop talking for a little while so you can listen to his chest? You say, I'll just need you to stop speaking for a moment so I can listen to your chest. Or, could you stop speaking for just a moment so I can listen to your chest? Bye. For more practice with this topic, you can download a free worksheet at promedicalenglish.com.